Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to make this fun art journal page. It's very whimsical and bright and just the thing to break you out of the doldrums of a creative rut, which is what I have been having this week. It's been awful. I'm just gonna start by sketching on a few cupcakes. And um, when I was looking for inspiration for this page, I actually went to paint my photo. I know it's like my favorite website right now. And there was some really cute cupcakes and I thought that would just be fun to use as an art journal page. So I'm just doodling a cupcake basically and I'm using my micron pens which are waterproof India ink and I'm going to be using the Bombay India inks to paint this with so if you could see on this cupcake I sketched the basic shape and now I'm putting on the little fluted bits of frosting just by adding lines so really all I'm doing here is shapes and lines please don't feel intimidated by uh, just going for that white paper and doodling because honestly if nobody likes it if you don't like it when you're done toss it in the trash tear it right out of there Nobody cares. The important thing is that you have fun and stuff like this just really kind of makes you feel creative, breaks you out of the rut. Now here I decided I would try doing the details first before I had the basic drawing. So, you know, whatever, whatever you feel like trying, trying in different ways to, um, to approach a picture, it'll make you more creative and it just, it's kind of like taking a different road home. So you're driving home from work and instead of going the way you always go, take a different road. It keeps your brain sharp. That's kind of what I'm doing here with this sketch. I'm sketching it differently each time. So do what you think is gonna work best for you. Try something different as often as you can. And you know, it'll keep you more creative. It'll keep your mind sharp. And we all need that. We all need to keep our brains nice and sharp. I decided to use a really cute, quote I have found on um, on the internet. I think, I don't, it wasn't on Pinterest. I just did a Google search for cupcake quotes. And um, it says, you are a beautiful cupcake in a world full of muffins. And I just thought that was awesome because um, I, I don't really like muffins um, because I just think, you know, if I'm gonna have the calories, I want a cupcake, I want a frosting. I want frosting, you know, that's the difference between a muffin and a cupcake is the frosting. And it was funny because my daughter was making um, banana muffins last night and um, she made it with milk and eggs because I said, I don't care if I, have, uh, if I have muffins or not. I like a cupcake, but muffins, no thanks. Go ahead and put eggs in that. Um, I'm using this doily stencil that that is uh, from Die Cuts With A View and they're a wicked bargain. I picked it up at Joann's online and it was $5 for the, actually regular price is $5 for the 12 by 12 stencil and it was on sale for like 40% off. So I got it for like $2.99 or something. And I just thought those stencils were really fun. Now I like to put a dollar store cutting mat underneath my page, like right between the pages of my journal so that I don't have to worry about spills and drips of like the messy media. And India ink is really thin, so it, it will be messy. I'm just using some synthetic brushes to paint with. I bought this set of brushes um, at the stamp show and it was a, quite a bargain. It was $10 for like 10 brushes and I love the brushes with the acrylic candles, but I really didn't care for these for watercolor. They're, they weren't snappy enough, uh, but I found uh, they're great for using with India ink and I don't have to worry about ruining them so much. You do want to give them a good rinse and probably a wash with soap and water when you're done, just because India ink, if it dries in the bristles, that metal part where the bristles are attached to the brush that's called the ferrule if um paint or ink dries in that and it's a permanent ink it will ruin your brush so give it a good rinse you know wash it out with your dish soap it'll be great baby shampoo is great too so i'm just using that um that ink and I've diluted, I'll dilute it sometimes with the water if I want it drier. I have a water bucket just out of shot there um, so I could lighten up my colors a bit. But um, you can use watercolor if you don't have India ink. You could use regular drawing ink. The thing about India ink, and I get asked this like, should I bother investing in it? What's the big difference? What's the deal? Why would I want to use India ink rather than watercolors? And honestly, it's not that much different. The uh, big difference is that when it's dry, it's permanent. So like if I wanted to paint over any of these things later it's not gonna I mean you'll see this in a little bit it's not gonna reactivate the paint underneath like it would with watercolor but I, I don't think that's that substantial of a difference but they do also the paints also don't shift when it dries you don't get that color shift like you do with watercolor and it does have a little bit of a shellac in it so it's a little glossier looking when you're done that's just the big difference and it doesn't seem like you have to get you don't really have to add that much water to it so it doesn't buckle your journal pages as much but you know if you have watercolors already 
it's not that big of a difference. It's so it's up to you whether you want to invest in the India inks or not. So those are the basic differences. Permanent when dry and it's a little glossier and there's no color shift between wet and dry. These are from Oriental Trading Company. They uh, generously donated the inks and the journal that I'm using today as well as the Micron pens, um, which I do have a video on re-inking those pens if you want to check that out. So I wet the cupcake frosting first and then I dropped in the color because I wanted it kind of pastel and I wanted a, not a solid color. I wanted it to go kind of from dark to light just so I, you know how you really look at things. Things aren't really solid colors unless you're looking at a cartoon. So I wanted that, you know, depth of color and, you know, the variation in color. Just have a little more, um, I don't know, a little more liveliness to my picture, I guess. And I wanted somewhere else to go. I wanted to be able to layer on a more concentrated color for shadows later on the road, down the road, if I decided I wanted that. Um, so now I'm trying to decide, do I want purple or do I want green? I decided to go with that nice apple green. I wanted to keep a limited color palette so that my um, artwork would stay vibrant. So I'm using this apple green color, a bright yellow, a magenta, uh, turquoise, and that's it. I will be adding some white ink in a little bit. And I'm of course using the black ink pens, um, but I really wanted a nice, fresh, vibrant look on this piece because I was just feeling blah, very blah this week. And I, I needed some, I needed some sparkle. I needed some vibrancy in my work and in my life. You ever have those weeks where it's like, oh, I have all this time. I have all this stuff I need to do now. Go and well, where do I start? That's kind of the week I've been having. Um, so if I've seemed kind of mellow this week, that's why I've just been kind of like, oh my word, where do I start? <laughs> I'm just like adding some accents here. I added a little bit of that magenta and some yellow just to add some shadows on my frosting on that pink. I mean, I'm duh on that yellow frosting and I'm doing the same on the gumball in the middle cupcake. Um, and I'm also adding some full strength blue to the uh, frosting and the little gumball there. I'm just building up my colors, layering my colors to give me the look that I really want. Um, doing the same thing with the pink. So see how I, when I diluted the color earlier, that gave me the ability to layer on later and have a difference in color. Now I'm gonna mix up a little bit of the magenta and a little bit of that turquoise so that I can make a shadow underneath the cupcakes. So they'll stand up from that doily that I had uh, stenciled on there earlier. And then with just a damp brush, I could pull it along the edge of that ink and then kind of fan it out so I had a natural shadow. So now I want to dry my paper because I want to do um, some more special effects. I decided I wanted to use my diamond dust glitter and that's a really, really chunky clear glitter. And since it's such a chunky glitter, I want a heavy duty adhesive. So I am using this um, Beacon 3-in-1 use any clear glue that is thick enough that has the body that can hold that chunky glitter and this glitter almost looks like shards of glass it's just so sparkly and bright you can see kind of when i put it there now because it is a thick glitter i'm pressing it into the glue see me just tapping it down with my finger my finger is not getting gluey because of how much glitter is there so now i'm just going to tap the extra off onto my uh scrap there and here you can see how shiny that is isn't that gorgeous so that's another reason I like to keep those dollar store cutting mats around. Of course, I should have wiped that off first before I put glitter on it because I think I might be getting some stray debris in that jar, but oh well, hopefully it won't show up in the next project. But uh, you brush off the extra and uh, you can see how really sparkly and fun. It really looks like um, sugar-coated glitter there. You can see it again in that picture really well. So now I'm adding some water around the doily and dripping in some color because I noticed that, yeah, I stenciled that doily, but I didn't give it an edge on the outside so that you could see really what it was. And I'm just dragging some of that color out so that um, it's not just so stark there. Just try to make it blend. And I'm gonna mix in a little bit of turquoise and give it even more of a shadow underneath the doily. I just like that. And while I'm at it, I do like a nice dark frame on my work, but I didn't wanna go with black because the only black I had was my line uh, drawing. So I'm just going in with that turquoise along the edge just to frame it. And again, I have my cutting board under there just to keep the other pages clean so I don't have messy pages. And I thought that I just, I wanted another depth of color. So I decided to go in with the white India ink, which is fairly opaque and add highlights to all the little flutes and the icing on my cupcake. 
and also to some of the cupcake wrappers themselves. I just, sometimes you just want that little sparkle and white will give you a nice sparkle. And that's something I probably wouldn't have done with watercolor. Uh, the ink, it just, see it's, it's sitting on top and it's not reactivating the ink underneath. So that's what I meant about being able to layer your India ink colors. And that pretty much finishes off that page for me. If you'd want more art journal tutorials, make sure you click on that button there that says more art journal tutorials. Clever, huh? I'm awful, I'm wicked clever. And uh, hit that subscribe button while you're at it so you won't miss any of my daily videos. I I do hope that you enjoyed this video and if you liked it please give me a thumbs up please subscribe if you want to see those daily videos and as always happy crafting